Ladies and gentlemen, Madam President, it's really a pleasure to have the possibility to speak to you on issues I'm working uh, on a daily basis uh, when I feel that I have not done enough uh, to fight crimes on a global level. Uh, I have seen in the beginning uh, of my life that there have been, there had been uh, the trials in Nuremberg, but what I saw later on, and even on the level of the German Supreme Court, was that really nobody was interested in ongoing proceedings, and that back in 2001, when I already had been a judge of the Supreme Court, the court had to excuse itself. Why? Because the work of the Supreme Court was primarily to shelter the perpetrators of the crime at that time and the judges acting at that time. Uh, the positive message is that this has changed, but not only in Germany. I'm extremely happy uh, that I can introduce myself by lessons learned and uh, phrases uh, really impressing me um, by my mentor, uh, Sheriff Bassioni. I think numerous people will know him and for me he is the wonderful institution of international criminal law. Without him, maybe we wouldn't sit here in this composition. The world rests on three pillars, on truth, on justice, and on peace. If you want peace, work for justice. If you see a wrong, you must right it. Sheriff Bassioni had a comp wonderful compilation of uh, in religious orders, and you may have uh, been aware that the last one, if you see wrong, you must write it. It's um, taken from the Hadith, and it should be um, important for all of us in that we come together and write what is wrong. And we have seen and heard a lot about things that went right and also what went wrong. Unfortunately, uh, the latter is um, in the vast majority when looking back to any events in Syria, in Yemen, in other countries. But I'm extremely uh, grateful to you that the attention is drawn to that what happened in your country. And it's an ongoing procedure, ongoing in the sense that we know that um, attempts are made by the current government to also um, take pressure on countries where members of your group are working or where they had found asylum, in particular um, Albania. If this would be true, what we have heard until now as rumors, it would be scandalous, but I can't believe it. As a judge, I have to be extremely careful, but I have to say, if there was such an intervention um, in favor of the current regime, in order to uh, identify um, persons fighting against uh, the uh, crimes uh, committed in the massacre 1988, then it would be scandalous that uh, they um, 
trap these persons in Albania and uh, take evidence from them based on an illegal uh, a warrant, I don't want to call it a uh, search warrant, but it's a, a real example that we have also to think about the past and even if it's time consuming and money consuming, this is no argument. When this world has money enough to wage war here and there and to buy incredible num numbers of weapons, knowing very well that there will be a spiral of um, violence. And whilst we are here, people are dying throughout the world. And also in the connection of your case, let me call it your case, in the connection of your case, uh, we have to be aware that at present, in the last 50 days, there have been about 50 executions in Iran. And this should also worry us. And we have to find the link between the events in 1988. We have to commemorate, and we, as I said, extremely grateful for this. But um, it is necessary uh, to fight also against these crimes. Bill mentioned it, uh, that there is for human beings no time limit when we have to talk about these heinous crimes. There must be accountability for those perpetrators of the crimes uh, committed in the prison in 1988, and in particular those in the background, those ordering these crimes. And even if it's a sitting president, we have now uh, concluded in the, under international law that being a sitting president of a country is not an obstacle to bring cases against them. There is no longer immunity. And the good message is that apparently what you have already prepared um, by compiling evidence and uh, videotaping of um, hearing of uh, witnesses. I think uh, this is very important. And would it have been possible that in Sweden a person would be brought to justice, as we have already heard, uh, when in the case of Hamid Nouri, uh, based on the evidence of 26 witnesses, he got um, life imprisonment. And uh, I think here is a close nexus to Ibrahim Raisi, and uh, we shall be aware of this, because it becomes a puzzle. The evidence heard there is evidence that can be brought as evidence in a court of justice. We have to be aware that it's not necessarily enough uh, to have video footage, to have documents, but also it must be possible that uh, these evidence can be used in a criminal court of justice. For me as a judge, um, it's really important that not in, uh, only in theory, but in the practice from the very beginning, we are thinking whether or not 
um, a case can be brought based on the evidence and in particular whether this um, evidence can be used in court. So what have we at hand? We, uh, we have now at hand, and this is the really kind of evolution since um, the establishment of the ad hoc international tribunals for former Yugoslavia and for Rwanda, that we have a set of international crime. The four international crimes being uh, the ones in the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court, that is genocide, that is crime against humanity, and not relevant in our context, war crimes and the crime of aggression. It was already said, and I need not repeat it, what we need is accountability. For me, it does not count what is the label of the crime. A crime against humanity, in particular in the case before us, can be a more sin uh, significant uh, and attracting even a higher sentence when it's leveled, labeled as crime against humanity. But we have to know in advance what we want as maybe prosecutors of these crimes when we collect and condense uh, evidence for the purposes of an upcoming, maybe, um, uh, case. And uh, I think uh, the one can discuss, of course, whether the group can be a religious group, at the same time a political group, and is it enough uh, that, a person, that a group is part of another group and therefore can be in the spirit and the sense of the crime of genocide um, be seen as uh, carrying the intent to destroy in whole or in part a religious group. Um, to be extremely honest, it, dep it depends who are the judges. I have seen, seen so many colleagues of mine when it came to the question, is it now genocide, is it extermination, a crime against humanity, who had the one or the other opinion. So therefore, we can without problem be relaxed because it is for sure then when we have an indictment based on genocide and crimes against humanity uh, that uh, one uh, crime will be in any event confirmed for the indictment and the details will be heard and um, uh, it may also be as it was before the ICTY and um, the Rwanda Tribunal, that the judges come to the conclusion, conclusion it's both. It's genocide and there are crimes against humanity committed in an extremely serious way. So what are the tools to bring accountability in the past? Um, we had yeah, the work of the ad hoc tribunals I mentioned before, also for Sierra Leone, Cambodia, Lebanon, and Kosovo. It is possible. It is possible to bring, judge, uh, bring also judges, but other people and presidents and high-ranking militaries before a court of law. And uh, it is possible, that's not the positive message, that in these cases it was uh, also based on the political will. And I'm pretty sure that in uh, uh, your country, Iran, there will be no political will. But we have to overcome this silence 
by acting on a national plane or like it was in Sweden or uh, recently, three weeks ago in Germany, that two cases were opened uh, of um, alleged perpetrators of the 1988 um, uh, scandalous uh, massacre in your country. So uh, let's see what will be uh, um, the outcome also of the Swedish case when it will become final. But uh, the positive is that there is apparently in the will also uh, on the basis of uh, domestic criminal courts. You may ask, why not the International Criminal Court? I mentioned several times. Simply because um, uh, the crime was committed before 2002, and in the time before, uh, the, they can't exercise jurisdiction allegedly uh, and for the reasons uh, they, held, uh, they were held uh, by the drafters of the Rome Statute, the ICC Statute, that there should be no retroactivity. I have another opinion. It doesn't matter. They say it harshly. No person shall be criminally responsible under this statute, the Rome Statute, for any conduct prior to the entry and force of the statute 2002. So here we can't find an anchor, but there is no doubt that we can have ad hoc tribunals. But I dare say, confronted with the deluge of evil around the globe, at present also in Ukraine, I wonder whether there will be uh, a majority finding that we shall um, open a new court. But it is necessary. It's not only necessary that the evidence is collected and it's collected in the right way, but maybe the hearings in domestic criminal courts, for example, in Sweden, Switzerland, several cases in Germany, um, based on the principle of jurisdiction, uh, universal jurisdiction, uh, opens the door and may pave the way for an international prosecution of these crimes, because it does not really have a, um, is not really meaningful if um, only outsingled persons are convicted and there is no um, uh, prosecution and uh, no hearing of cases um, in one country and uh, the others remain um, without being held accountable. And accountable is the, the real word what we need. We have heard that that often have been, uh, there have been investigating groups being created by the United Nations and also by other organs, for example, American Bar Association. I was a member of the Moot Court um, against North Korea last year in Washington, D.C. Uh, and afterwards, I felt moot and empty myself because what was the result? We need a real court. We need real evidence. And therefore, in particular, that the massacre 1988 must not be forgotten we are here today uh, recalling when we see a wrong, we must write it. How can we write it? I think um, in, on two occasions, uh, on the basis of uh, United Nations, something really important has happened. 
because there can't be an international court in Syria or in Myanmar. In 2016, there was a triple I mechanism, as we say, um, triple I, why international, independent, investigative um, mechanism for the crimes committed in uh, Syria. And there was a double I, the independent investigative um, mechanism for the crimes committed in Myanmar, established by the Human Rights Council in 2018, whereas the other one was established uh, by the General Assembly of the United Nations. And here you can see what is the way of the future. I think uh, we can forget that we will um, get a decision of the Security Council of uh, the United Nations. There will be always a country vetoing this, and therefore we, I hope, and I seriously hope, that we can rely on the work of the General Assembly of the United Nations. May it be that by a resolution, and I think there's a clear majority in favor of such an instrument, that we have a triple I, an international, independent, investigated me uh, mechanism for the crimes committed um, on the territory of Iran since 1988 onwards. I think we should not exclude the crimes committed today and yesterday. But to mark this uh, very important event in 1988, I think this should be the starting point for this uh, new mechanism. What is the advantage? It will be have a composition of former prosecutors in international tribunals. They know exactly what we need as evidence supporting the single elements of crime we want uh, to charge. And therefore, uh, we have already seen in the past, in the two other mechanisms, that the product of this work was extremely good, and it's ongoing in relation to Myanmar. But I know for sure from good friends in this mechanism that they are willing and able to file within a few days an indictment against those responsible for the crimes committed there. And in particular here, um, when it comes to the crimes, since the alarm correctly uh, brought to our attention again today, that happened in 1988. And I thank all the individuals taking the time showing us and make uh, this event even more full of positive energy and blood that we fight for accountability in the future. And when we have such an institution, then this will help domestically when a person is apprehended abroad, as it was in Sweden and Germany, and it will also help that on the basis of the evidence collected, it becomes imperative for either Security Council or um, uh, Assembly General or a group of states 
may be a group of states eager to fight against impunity within the European Union and therefore building together a new international court. Hope will never die, but first we have to fight.